Kaiju, Turtles, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, Collectors, it's going to be Steven here, and welcome to another Dinosaur Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hammond Collection Carnotaurus. Yes, I really do like this guy. It's kind of sort of not really a T-Rex. Oh, it's a girl. Oh, as you can see on the screen, I got two of them, so I consider them a mating pair. We all saw that fantastic dinosaur series, didn't we? Yes, we did. So I do have a lot of Hammond Collection figures, actually, but uh, due to uh, some things that have gone on behind the scenes, I haven't had a chance to really share a lot of these with you, but that is going to change in the future. So when it comes to the Carnotaurus, this is something that has been sweeping the community by storm. A lot of people have listed this as their figure of the year, and I do see how that is possible. The figure looks absolutely beautiful, and the articulation is okay, and the price point is rather solid but is this living up to the hype or is this maybe just a, an aspect of you gotta broaden your horizons let's take a look to see whether or not it's going to be worth adding to your collection the short answer is yes but there's some stuff that we have to talk about so if you're familiar with the hammond collection a few of the figures that have been released most notably rexy had the implementation of glass eyes okay and it looked like that some of the press material that they were putting out for the Hammond collection is they were looking to move towards more of the figures having those glass eyes, which it does look cool when you're at a distance and you're kind of looking at the eyes. It does help to bring about a more lifelike effect. A lot of the old school Jurassic Park figures did have those. I'm thinking of like the bull T-Rex that was all really cool. The problem is, is that on Rexy, the quality control for the eyes was rather off. Sometimes behind the eye, if you will, that makes sense. Uh, the way that the pupil was situated in there, it wasn't correct. Sometimes you had to look at it at the right angle, which you were like holding the figure up like above your head in order to see the eye. Uh, it, it, it just it just didn't land well. Well, I just through circumstance, as you did see, I wound up with two of these. OK, so with that being said, yes, there is a wide range of quality control just between these two, not only from what you're able to see from the pictures that I'm showing you of the heads for both of them. And you can actually see the printing of the different paint application from the both. But you can clearly see that from the eyes, they're at about exactly the same angle just because of how I'm able to have everything with my tripod. But yeah, you can see that the eyes are a bit iffy. Now, aside from that, when we take a look at the figure um, again, wow, the actual implementation of the paint apps, whether or not that is actually going to be decals or a very sophisticated method of getting this thing painted. Um, Mattel did a really nice job here. I do think that the figure does look really good. Unfortunately, just because of the price point, keep in mind at retail, it's supposed to be about $35. There are going to be some scratches just because of the way that things are engineered and the articulation points are going to scratch up against each other. You're not going to have the best quality control when it, at the factory parts are going to be thrown in a box and then they're assembled, so on and so forth. So there is a little bit of forgivability. I don't know. Is that is that the word? Ah, who cares? There is a little bit of wiggle room, if you will, for what is or is not acceptable for a scratch. But what I do have to say is even with some of the miscellaneous marks on either one of my Carnotauruses, I do think that the figure does look good. Okay, thanks to circumstance, um, as you kind of saw in some of the photography already, I do happen to have two of these gals, though I'd like to say that one's a guy and one's a gal for me, so I'll, yeah, yeah. Uh, the articulation for this particular figure is, I would say, disappointing uh, in some areas. I think it could have been changed up, and uh, it's consistent in terms of quality across the board for my two units, where, in, uh, unfortunately, it's a bit inconsistent. There, there did need to be some changes to this figure. Um, which I think a lot of folks can agree on simply that uh, that needed to happen. So what do we have? Well, obviously we do have the jaw, which will open and close, but it actually does move on both the top part of the mouth and the bottom part, but they sort of just move together. So if you can see here, I can move the top part and the bottom part does want to move as well. So that's a pretty nifty feature. Not sure if it actually means anything aside from uh, cool, but nevertheless. So then we have this portion of the neck here where the head is attached as well. And we can get it to look down, look up seemingly on a hinge and wiggle left and right. But there isn't going to be really any rotation, which is why I'm inclined to say that this is basically just two different hinges. We do have a joint here where the neck plugs into the body, but likewise, once again, we can get them to look down, we can get it to look up and sort of wiggle left and right at this joint. But once again, no twisting or rotation, and that is going to be the same on both of the 
uh, units that I have. So I'm thinking that this figure just doesn't have a ball joint there, which is disappointing. The arms, they're a little stubby, but they do have hinges, so this way we can move them in and out, and swivels, so this way we can spin them around. You can see the range of movement there, which is pretty solid. We do have elbow joints, hinge, so they can bend, and then they swivel around. Ooh, ah. There isn't going to be any sort of torso joint whatsoever, which is rather disappointing. They could have put a cut here and a ball joint, or even just like a double hinge system where they wiggle back and forth and up and down, kind of like they did in the neck. I think that would have been pretty cool. But nevertheless, for the hips, we do have seemingly a ball joint system, because um, they kind of wiggle in and out and they move forward and back. But you can kind of see that they have somewhat of a ratchet movement forward and back, so I'm not quite sure. While this is cool because it sort of helps to maintain uh, joint stability over time, you do have a limited range sort of there clicking. It is what it is. I mean, it still works. We do have a knee hinge, if you will. So that far forward and that far back, but this is going to be an issue with the ankle joint or the leg joints. Well, yeah, ankle as well. Uh, you can see that the full range of the hinge that is used isn't utilized. So even if I push really hard, you can even see that the plastic is starting to stress and crack a little bit. So we don't really want to do that. Um, we, as stated, there's a swivel here as well. It spins all the way around this portion of the foot or ankle or whatever part of the dinosaur anatomy. I don't know. does have a hinge. It does want to spin a little bit. It is rather stiff on this particular one. And then for the feet, ankle as well, you're like, oh, does it move up? Eh. Yeah, just like up on here. You see that it wants to move just a little bit more, but it can't. It can move down, but it does have ankle rocker movement. For the tail, it does plug in on a ball joint, so it does wiggle around. Cool. This does actually... Come on now. There we go. I thought it plugged in here. Here's where it plugs in. <laughs> My mistake. Yes, so this is on a bendy wire after it attaches in on a ball joint. So what I will say is the articulation is fine. I'm a, somewhat disappointed because there are a few spots where why wouldn't you just like put a ball joint so this way I can kind of twist the Carnotaurus head. But nevertheless, we can... Uh, get some neat poses and this figure does happen to balance well uh even come on now with the small feet so there you go cool that's a that's a light yeah size comparison time and a uh, scale, what is that? I mean, how big is a Carnotaurus in the Jurassic franchise compared to real life? What are you looking for? Do you want accurate scale to the movie or real life? Do you just want to play pretend? I mean, we know what scale these are supposed to be for the line, but I mean, do you want your Carnotaurus to go after Goku or King Kong? I mean, who cares? Just have fun. If you like how big it is, great. If you don't, I guess you're going to have to find something else. Buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. I do think that the articulation is very much so an oversight, and I don't quite understand why they didn't change the neck articulation. Very much so they could have, but I don't know why they didn't, except for maybe saving a couple of bucks. But then I don't think it would have been that much. Anyway, glass eyes, really cool that they did put them in, but I do think that is something that needs to be hammered out in order to make this really work, because if it can, then I think they'll do a really nice job. What this figure really excels in is going to be the paint application because it is phenomenal. The articulation does need to be worked out a little bit across the Hammond collection, I would say, because the legs are a little bit awkward. And again, I showed you the range on some of the hinges for the legs. But nevertheless, if you are a fan of the Hammond collection, this is definitely going to be one of the best figures in the line. If you are an overall action figure collector, you're going to pick this up and you're going to say, yeah. I get how some people would really like this figure. It is good. I'm not knocking this. It's a great piece. I was able to get one for about 25 bucks thanks to Cyber Monday, and that is a solid price. But MSRP is 35. I'll let that speak for itself, at least on my end.